Check. Checkity check checkity check 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 one two. Hey guys subscribe. Okay, that's good now that I spent 10 minutes setting up the video Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Bryce. I'm a backpacker. I do a lot of trips. I make a lot of videos. And today I just really wanted to talk to you about down jackets, puffy jackets. And that's actually a lie because I just bought a new one and I just wanted a reason to talk about it today. So we're gonna go over uh, down jackets. Pretty much everything I know, maybe. A lot of my recommendations when buying a down jacket. This jacket right here is my Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer Puffy Jacket. Jacket. Man, it was one of my first pieces of backpacking beer. Uh, beer. <laughs> I got my backpacking beer right here. I realized early on that I needed a good warm layer that was very packable and very lightweight. I didn't have anything very backpacker friendly at the time. Through all my research, everybody had these puffy jackets on. So I started doing my research on them and realized that feathers are the way to go when it comes to warmth, which that can be debatable. There's definitely a time and a place for synthetic insulation. And puffy jackets like this one especially uh, the warmth to weight ratio that you get as well as the packability it's just a very very <laughs> like very worthwhile piece of gear worthwhile worth worth the money this is a worth it's a worth the money buy this let's get right into um, the pros and the cons for synthetic versus down puffy jackets. There's a lot to talk about here. Synthetic insulation, like I said, it has its place in the backpacking world. It's more waterproof, it's a lot cheaper. Um, coats like this, I'm not gonna lie. So this is a Ghost Whisper. These are expensive, they're over $300. I had a price in mind, I waited and waited and waited till I found one. I actually got this one for 200 bucks and it's the hooded version. I was so happy with that price. So here's my synthetic insulation puffy jacket. Now this is actually actually my daily jacket. I wear this thing to work every day. I really just like, uh, I just like puffy jackets. It's just kind of my thing. I think a lot of people think that you have to spend a hundred plus dollars on a actual down coat for backpacking and that's not true synthetic is a good option for a lot of things. Like number one, if it gets wet, it's not going to lose all its insulative, uh, Insulative, man, I'm struggling today in this video. Properties, that's the word. This jacket, while not being as light, not being as packable, was, man, probably like a 16th of the price of that. I think I paid like 30 bucks for this. When it comes to backpacking in a down jacket, like an actual down jacket, um, I don't ever hike in it because if you sweat at all, I've made that mistake before, it just completely soaks through. One time I wore my green Ghost Whisperer here and I hiked like a mile or two out to the car. I thought it'd be nothing and I was sweating more than I thought. My, I had it unzipped, I was getting good airflow, I was feeling like I was pretty cool but my back where my pack uh, was pressing against was completely saturated when I got to the car, which would have been a pretty big issue had I been out there for another like uh, one or two days. It was completely wet, soaked through, which is the con of down, we'll get into that. But that's what's good about synthetic layers here is uh, when they're a little bit wet or damp, they still retain insulative, insulative properties. I actually like the synthetic uh, layers. I mean, I have good down jackets, so I don't, I've never backpacked with this one. But if you uh, don't wanna break the bank on spending money on an expensive down jacket, these are good. Uh, like I said, they're gonna weigh a little bit more. They're going to not pack down quite as small. It's really not an issue. So when you're talking about uh, like bigger things like sleeping bags where your your bag might pack down this big when it's a down bag But your synthetic bag might be so big it, it will take up all your pack room or it won't even fit in your pack when it comes to a down jacket uh, They're kind of, they kind of pack down pretty small as is so even the synthetic ones pack down Small enough that it's it's not an issue So I think that if you're like waiting to get an expensive down jacket or if you only backpack once or twice a year and you just can't really justify spending $300 on a top of the line down jacket. Synthetic jackets, even like the super cheap ones you see that are 30, 40 bucks that are packable. A lot of them are labeled as packable, even if they're like off brands. 
uh, they're pretty good. They have decent warmth. I'm not going to say they're super warm, but then again, the super lightweight backpacking jackets really aren't that warm anyway. I would say that these two are pretty comparable in weight. I, I will say that this one is warmer. The same amount of insulation is definitely going to be warmer with down but it, it comes at a cost. It's expensive. You have to take care of it a little bit more. You have to make sure it doesn't get wet. And that's gonna bring me to another point here. Anytime you hear companies talking about uh, like waterproof coatings or like the outer layers here being waterproof treated or a hydrophobic down, anytime you hear that, just ignore it and plan on never getting this thing wet. So that is my biggest thing with this jacket is just don't get these wet. Some of the coatings will repel a light rain, but it's a very special type of rain that will not soak through this. I think most of the time when you get caught in a rainstorm, uh, this is going to soak through in minutes, maybe a minute. Uh, a very, very light misting you're going to be okay but the problem with this is if you chance that if you do take this out in any amount of rain at all and you're out there for any extended period of time i mean you're you're playing russian roulette right there if you get this wet and this is your main heavy layer of warmth that is scary so i make sure i spend extra time waterproofing this and my quilt anything that's down feathers in my pack make sure that's waterproof in there as well as just i don't wear this even in a light sprinkle i will not wear this jacket so let's talk about down fill i believe that jacket there is like an 850 i don't think it's a 900 it, it might be i don't know it's a it's a generation one ghost whisperer but here's the new one i just bought Bam! <laughs> this thing is uh, pretty sweet. I will say it's one of those things that when you buy, you get it immediately and you're kind of saddened because you don't like it as much. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, when I clicked, actually I didn't click buy, I bought this off a guy on Facebook Marketplace, but when I bought this, a little piece of me died inside because it is not cheap. Um, I will say I got a very, very good deal on it. This is a North Face Summit Series L3, so it's the third layer of their layering system. This is an actual like Alpine jacket. They uh, do expeditions oh, yeah. with this jacket. You can see it's an 800 Pro there, so it's an 800 fill. Let's talk about fills for a minute. So the higher the number, the better the fill. The bigger the feather, the less weight your jacket is going to have to be to be warmer. So the actual number doesn't dictate how warm the jacket will be. It actually just dictates the uh, quality of down and uh, it can be a smaller jacket but be a higher fill and be a similar weight to something that's quite thick. Here I actually have another North Face jacket. In this one, um, I got it in an outlet store and it was only 40 bucks um, because it's a 550 down, which is a pretty low rating for a down, uh, down fill. But this thing is, it's super, super puffy. Uh, it's warm, but it's huge. So it takes a lot of fill and a little bit extra weight to get the same warmth of uh, something that would have been a lot smaller and lighter if it would have been a, uh, a higher fill. But anyway, I just wanna talk about this for a second. So the Summit Series North Face, I've never had a designated uh, winter puffy jacket. And quite honestly, I've never really felt like I needed one. Uh, I just made my fleece, like my mid layer, a little bit thicker and with all my layers, uh, the Ghost Whisperer has really never done me wrong like into the teens. But this year I've really been focusing on a warmer gear, uh, mainly keeping my hands and feet warmer. And the idea of dabbling in some like really, really cold temperatures is intriguing to me. So I've been acquiring a lot uh, better gear for uh, cold weather. So this jacket, although probably around the same fill as the Ghost Whisperer, it's got a lot more fill in it. So it's only slightly heavier by a couple of ounces, but this is a very, very puffy, uh, good winter jacket, in my opinion. Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm gonna hang on to it or not just because it's so expensive. The big thing I don't like about it is the hood. So this is an expedition uh, style coat. So the hood is, like, look, if I lift this up without even trying, it's gigantic. And it's probably for other layers of hoods and big hats and everything. It's an actual alpine jacket. And I'm actually like almost dripping in sweat right now. I better cool off. 
I just don't know if I really, really need it yet. I'll hang on to it for a while and, and see if it uh, fits its place in a good winter backpacking setup. Yeah, so fills, I don't know if I ever finished my thought on that. The higher the number, the better. It's also gonna be more expensive. Uh, basically, you're just, you're getting plucked from better chickens. No, actually, down is most of the time sourced from goose or ducks, hopefully ethically sourced, which I don't know what that means. I mean, is it dead? Or do they get the consent from the, the goose to pluck their feathers first? So here we go. This is the trademark brace coat, is it not? The very first video I ever filmed on YouTube actually talking to the camera. I had this jacket in that video. So I've had this thing forever and I've kept really good care of it. I know a lot of people are scared of the durability of down jackets, which is a concern, but you just have to take uh, precautions. My next video is actually going to be a video on taking care of backpacking gear. I'm going to talk about this jacket in particular and as well as other pieces of backpacking gear I have, I've been kind of stewing on this idea for a while, trying to think of how I uh, keep my gear in good condition. And I think I have some good tips because this thing is in near mint condition and it's six years old at this point. But let's take a minute and talk about the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisper. It's like eight some ounces. I think they might not even sell this one anymore. I think they have a Whisperer 2 and there's a Whisperer Ultralight, which is even lighter than this. Um, I love these jackets. I don't. I don't think they're like exceptionally warm. They're not meant to be like a winter jacket, but it it is warm. I, I guess by saying it, it's not exceptionally warm is kind of a lie because the warmth you get from it for the weight you're bringing and for the area that it packs down to, which is about, I'd say about that big, about that thick, um, it's amazing. So if you're gonna do like a ton of backpacking, it's definitely a great option. It will break the bank though, it'll, it'll hurt It'll hurt a little bit when you click that buy button, but if you're an avid backpacker or you plan on backpacking a lot, um, man, this is, it's definitely a good purchase. A couple other things to note on down jackets. Um, if you are new and you're, you're wanting to know what to buy, make sure it has pockets, number one. These insulated down pockets for your hands are so nice. You always want a place to rest your hands. Uh, when it's a little bit chilly out and I've always backpacked in really lightweight gloves and that's because I can just throw them in my pockets and and they're good to go they warm up really quick also you want the hood I almost bought one of these without the hood because they're so much cheaper don't do that if you're wearing a down jacket it's because it's chilly out and you're gonna want to be warm <laughs> you're gonna want that hood I think that's about it it's just just one tip though I want to go over do not ever hike in this I I, I know I mentioned that earlier but don't ever hike in a down jacket. I mean, there's, there's a chance you will be sweating enough within a half mile to completely soak your back and it'll just render the insulation useless. So don't do that. Uh, wear it around camp. Oh, and huge tip, stay the <laughs> away from fire. So make sure if you guys wanna see more videos like this, you hit that subscribe button as well as all my backpacking trip videos. I'm getting a couple in the, in the, in the uh, books for this year right now. I'm starting to plan trips, which is exciting for this year. So subscribe, make sure you don't miss those. Also leave a comment below with your favorite down jacket. I'm sure a lot of people in here would like to see other options, maybe options that are a little bit cheaper than the one I'm wearing. Because like I said, this, this one hurts. It hurts right here when you click buy on this one. But yeah, that'll do it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.